Your personal statement is not a shopping list of all your skills and interests like I'm very well organized, I have great attention to detail, and I've been playing the violin since the age of four. What's up you guys? Today I wanted to switch things up a little bit and talk about tips on how to write the perfect personal statement for law school. Now, it might come to you as a surprise, but I actually went to law school for both my undergrad and postgrad studies. I also passed the legal practice course here in the UK, and even though I no longer work in the legal field, I want to share with you how I was able to get offers from multiple prestigious universities in the UK, including UCL, and you can too. My first tip for you before you even create a document labeled personal statement is to narrow down your list of universities of choice to say five or 10, and then research every single one of them very, very thoroughly. I hate to break it to you, but if you want to get into a good law school, you can't use the same personal statement for every single university that you apply to. Each university and law school is unique in its own way and has a different mission. You need to be able to clearly understand not only what these universities are looking for in students, but importantly, if your values resonate with that institution. You've got to think about going to university like finding a job. It's going to be a long-term-ish commitment, and your core values need to be aligned with that company, or in this case, university. So as an example, I chose UCL because it emphasized addressing global challenges and is considered London's global university. Back then, this was aligned with my interest in international law, which in itself is at the forefront of addressing global challenges. Plus, I grew up as a third country kid and lived in four different countries. The reason it's so important is because it will make your personal statement more personal and therefore genuine. The other bonus is that the process of writing it will, as a result, come very naturally. The second step for you is to create an outline of your personal statement. You don't need to create actual headings, but you can use these as placeholders so that you don't waffle and get sidetracked. You typically have about a thousand words to write, so you need to be very, very concise and to the point. Your personal statement is not a shopping list of all your skills and interests like I'm very well organized, I have great attention to detail, and I've been playing the violin since the age of four. Broadly, your personal statement should contain three main parts. The reason for applying, your academic and non-academic experience, and finally, extracurricular interests and achievements. But we can also break this down into these categories here. You have your introduction, which is your why law, your experiences with the law, and I don't mean like getting arrested or something, your area or areas of interest, your academic and work experiences, your extracurricular experiences, why this law school, and a short conclusion. Let's take a look at these separately, starting with your introduction. Here you need to answer the question, why law? It's a very personal question if you come to think of it. This is where you talk about what does law mean to you on a personal level. It's your thesis. You could talk about how law is not just a dynamic profession, and it's more than just a social construct. As cliche as it may be, you could even open with a quote that reflects your thesis and then briefly, just very briefly discuss it. Next, you can tie this in with your motivation to study law, and you can talk about how you discovered it. It's not enough to say, well, you know, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a lawyer. Or I used to argue a lot with people and they would tell me, oh, Dasha, you should become a lawyer. That doesn't show any motivation and it just won't do. So you could, for example, say that you broke your smartphone one day and wanted to get it fixed. 
You thought it was still under warranty, but the shop argued that it wasn't. And so you read every single line of the terms and conditions and warranties, and it turned out, well, actually, they were liable to fix it. Or it doesn't even have to be an actual experience that you lived through. You could also refer to an event that you saw on TV or studied at school in your politics and international relations class. Like war broke loose in country A and then country B intervened and you became curious as to how that happened and if that's even legal. So then you discovered the United Nations Charter and international law. This is then a great way to transition to the next part, which is the areas of law that interest you the most. You could even add into this section how and why this law school is the best place to study those areas. Maybe because of an article you read that was published by the university. For example, I studied war law during my time at UCL, and one of my professors was Dr. Kimberly Trapp. She actually wrote a chapter in a book called Terrorism and the International Law of State Responsibility, which I cited in one of my papers back in my undergrad. And I was able to refer to this to describe why I was specifically interested in war law. However, if you're applying for a bachelor program, you could pick like three areas to discuss. And obviously, if you're going to do a master's degree like I did, you could narrow it down to just one. Let's say that you're applying for a LLB and you're or interested in criminal law, aviation law, and the law of the sea. You could talk about why you're fascinated by those areas, because you followed the Oscar Pistorius trial. You were abhorred by how a civilian aircraft was shot down by belligerents, and then wondered how aviation law could apply. And you also followed the Costa Concordia disaster, which ignited your interest in the law of the sea. Fun fact, the law of the sea governs how nations interact with one another in maritime matters, whereas maritime law applies to private entities. But I digress. Importantly, when you talk about law in action, do not hesitate to express your opinion. One of the core skills of a lawyer or a law student is the ability to form arguments and be able to analyze pretty much anything. And this is something that universities are definitely looking out for when reading personal statements. So don't miss out on this opportunity. Your next step is to describe your academic work and work experience slash achievements. More often than not, law schools are looking for excellent grades. That's a fact. And excellent grades will only get you that far. It's not enough sometimes to get into a great law school. But if you don't have the grades, you can mitigate this by referring to your work experiences like internships and charity work. But if you don't have that kind of experience and still want to pimp up your personal statement, you can enroll to one of these awesome programs by applying through the International Business School Americas, or IBS for short. IBS offers intensive three-week executive summer and winter programs at world-renowned universities and business schools in five different international destinations like New York and even sunny California. And here's the best part. They're currently offering a scholarship that covers 60% of your tuition. Yep, 60%. You can check out the links to the programs in the description box below. But coming back to the personal statement, the goal in this section is to make observations on how law is applied in practice and then how your studies and other experiences reflect on law. So if you're taking a class in history at school, for example, you can somehow tie in law with history and say how studying history can help you become an excellent law student. Or it can even be chemistry, it doesn't really matter. As another simple example, let's say that you worked at Zara when you were 15 years old and you constantly dealt with customers, managers, and colleagues. This experience is a reflection of your communication skills, which is another core skill of a great law student and lawyer. Your extracurricular activities are also an important part of your personal statement. We're all human, we don't spend our entire time buried in books and researching law. 
It's completely normal to have more than one passion aside from what we want to study at university. The benefit of talking about your extracurricular activities and any noteworthy achievements is that it shows you're a well-rounded individual. It's also an opportunity to showcase any other skills that you may have that can be transferred into law, just like you did with your work experience. For instance, being an athlete requires grit and perseverance. You need both to be able to get through law school because it's tough. You can even dedicate a paragraph about why and how the relevant university can help you realize your ambition of, say, becoming a criminal lawyer or a United Nations delegate. Maybe it's because of a professor whose article you read recently, like I did, or because of that university's contribution to a famous legal journal. Tell them how, when you're done with the degree, you're going to do something awesome with it. And once you do that, you you can close with your conclusion, which can either be a summary of your thesis or a statement about your ambition. There's really nothing to it. If you need any help with your personal statement, give me a shout in the comments section. I hope this was a useful video for you guys and that you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe for more writing tips.